Welcome back. We're here looking at the S&P 500. And in the beginning, we are going to uh, do a fast recap of how the last trading week um, went. So we started up on Monday with this really bullish uh, candlestick here. And uh, we were bullish on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we ran into resistance. However, we did manage to break the top of this uh, candlestick, which was the high uh, from all the way back on, uh, this is uh, in in May or June, 8th of June. Um, so the only thing that is preventing this market to go higher at the moment is this gap here and the highs of uh, 3,400. That was basically prior to the coronavirus. So we ran into resistant at... Um, at 3,000, uh, 3,300 thereabout. And then we went down on Thursday and on Friday, and we didn't even reach the um, 20 exponential moving average before we basically bounced. So there are a few, I have a few scenarios of what maybe will happen in the, in the coming future, or at least before the, um, the elections, the presidential elections in the United States, because I don't believe that this market will completely crash before then. It may crash after, but it will not crash before. So, at the moment, we may see a market that goes higher, and that is probably the most likely thing that's going to happen. We have been gradually going higher and higher, um, since all the way back uh, um, from the lows in March. And we have not seen um, this market basically retest or try to retest these lows at any point. Um, and the reason for that is basically the Federal Reserve. This is no longer an uh, earnings market. Companies' earnings, which used to drive the stocks up and also the S&P uh, up, uh, that doesn't really count anymore. Uh, economics on the fundamentals, that has also gone through. Uh, you can just forget about those because uh, unemployment numbers, inflation numbers, and so on, technically pointless at this moment. If you're a day trader, yeah, then or a scalper, then probably it will matter to you. But in general terms and so on, no. This is all about the Federal Reserve. And that's the main reason why I think this market will just continue going slowly uh, upwards. Uh, because as long as the Federal Reserve uh, keeps interest rates low, as long as they, um, they are willing to bail out every single uh, company that gets into trouble, as long as they basically flood the market with new liquidity, this market will just go one way, and that is upwards. So I have two scenarios. I have a, I don't have a bearish scenario. I don't really see this market technically collapsing. Um, the only way that this market would collapse at the moment is if the Federal Reserve stopped with its monetary policy, which is highly unlikely, at least before the general election. Donald Trump will most likely uh, fire uh, Powell and, and put somebody in his place, which would basically do whatever he wanted to do. He has done that several times, and nobody is basically um, uh, standing in his way. So that will happen if, if the Fed were to try to, uh, to uh, relax their monetary policy. So that is not going to happen. They have, they're going to uh, continue with the same monetary policy my policy for at least, yeah, for a long, uh, for the foreseeable future. So the other thing is that we get um, a coronavirus that is completely out of control and states, most of the states have to shut down again. And even though um, the coronavirus number for most of the southern uh, states are horrendous, I don't really see them shutting down. I just don't see them technically shutting down. Uh, it may occur, but but even though 
the stage shut down. We have basically tried that before and we saw that we went down very quickly and then we came up very quickly. So even though that uh, we go down, the market basically knows that we have done, done this before and it took, well, only a few, a few months in order to get back to even again. But my other scenario is that we will start trading sideways. So 3000 is absolutely the bottom of this market. There is massive resistance here. We have to go through all of these uh, moving averages and, uh, and um, all of these um, support levels here. I don't really see us going lower than 3000 anytime soon. And we may see a market that trades in between these levels. So it may well be that we go and test this high again. So we either trade in between this area here, or we trade between a wider area. That's basically the top of this, and then go down to 3000, and we technically just trade sideways for uh, quite some time. Because there are so many sectors or so many companies within the, that basically part of the S&P 500 that are doing horribly. And I don't really see them, um, their stock going up anytime soon. Um, it will take years before their, their stock starts growing again. And therefore, I'm quite, I'm still quite skeptical that we will basically see the S&P just exploding to the upside. If that were to happen, then, then we most likely will see the S&P fall um, at some point really heavily back to this support level and then go up again. Uh, but I kind of find this scenario uh, more realistic that we'll just start, start trading sideways. We'll go up and we'll go down and go up and go down. And at some point we'll go and retest these highs and then go down. And that is probably how the mar market is going to behave for the next at least three months. Uh, the other scenario is that we look to the, for example, the uh, NASDAQ, which has been trading in a channel now for, for months. And you can basically see the S&P 500 also creating this channel. This uh, line being the support level of the channel, uh, while this line being the resistant level of the channel. So it may well be that we will, like the, like the NASDAQ, been trading in this channel, which is uh, it's a very bullish channel. It will go upwards. We'll go up. It has been going up. We go down, up, down. And at this moment, we just see um, a chance to go much higher from here. And then we'll just start trading within this channel. That may happen. That is what has been going on with the Nasdaq. And it is quite likely that, that uh, the S&P 500 will, um, will uh, do the same thing. It is not as clear as in the Nasdaq, but uh, either of, uh, one of these scenarios, I'm pretty sure that is what is going to happen. Uh, so if we go and look at the technical indicators, we can see that the RSI is not overbought, is not oversold, but it is in a downward trajectory. That basically means that we are about to see a more um, bullish momentum. Um, and it may well be that we go and uh, test um, a 50 moving average, uh, depending on this indicator here. We also see the MACD is about to, to, uh, to um, cross the, the signal line, indicating that we'll go lower from here. But the Bollinger Band, as I said every week now, has been the best indicator uh, for this market. Every single time that we have hit the, uh, the, the upper Bollinger Band, we have gone downwards. Every time we have hit the lower Bollinger Band, we have gone upwards. So this also is a uh, uh, is trading in a, uh, in, a, in a channel, so it looks basically like a channel. But 
if we focus mainly on uh, the Bollinger Band, then we will go and we test 3000 before we go up again. So, as I said in my first scenario, it may well be that we're going to trade sideways for the foreseeable future, at least until probably the election. It may well not be that this is going to be the uh, the highest that this market is going to to get. We'll go down to three thousand and up again, and then three thousand. That is a realistic scenario. Um, also, if we look at the stochastic, we can see that we have started to to uh, to. Um, it has signaled that we're going to go further down. Momentum is basically is downwards. Um, and that means that we may well be uh, retesting these lows again of 3,000 or thereabout. Uh, I doubt that we'll go through the 50, uh, 50 moving average, which is at this moment at 3,100. Uh, I, I doubt that we'll get through that. We can see that in the past we have gotten close to the 50 moving average before bouncing again. And uh, this was in... Late June, uh, we tried to test the 50 moving average and we bounced again. So, the low, I would not go. Uh, if we get to 3100, I'm going to be a buyer. I'm just going to wait until we get down to this level here and then I'll start to buy. I doubt that we'll go uh, to 3000. At the moment, we need a lot of bad news in order to break this 50 moving average. Um, we can also see that volume is, is really low compared to uh, the volume that was back in where the market collapsed. Also, in recently, when the market started selling off, the market, uh, the volume last week was really, really low. So, just in order to recap, uh, we have two scenarios. We have one where this market starts trading sideways, where 3,000 is absolutely the low point of this market. And the high point of this market is the highest prior to the coronavirus um, or these highs from last week. So it may well be that we'll trade sideways or that we'll start trading in a channel. We'll try. Uh, we'll trade similar to the Nasdaq, which basically is trading in a similar channel like this. And if if that is the case, if we start trading within this channel, then yes, we will go much higher from from here. Uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, there are a few. Uh, signals. If we break the signal line, then we'll probably not trade in this channel. That means that we'll go and retest the the 50 moving average and also or the lowest 3,000, and then we'll go up from here. Uh, I do not believe that this market is going down anytime soon. There is uh, there are a lot of reasons why we should go lower from here. But as I said, as long as the Federal Reserve has this market's back, we are not going to retest these lows anytime soon. So, uh, hope you find this video helpful. Uh, you're welcome to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button and also share this video. Uh, good luck and uh, thank you very much.